This is Jocko Podcast number 345 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. So just got back from an event at Echelon Front, this event that we call the Council. And what it is, we have a small group of about 20 leaders. We do it out in a very remote location in Northeast Washington State. And it's an opportunity to really get in depth with some leadership tools with some high level leaders that are running in most cases very large organizations and when I, when I was up there I just wanted to share some of what I talked about while I was there and and actually one specific idea that I first conceptualized at the council last year 2021 so in 2021 I went up there and essentially what happened was it was a pretty interesting dynamic. I get up there and we're, we're sitting down. It's a small group. There's like 15 or 20 people there. And Leif was telling a story about us being overseas or us going through training. And he kind of told a story where I, I it, came in at some point and made like a leadership decision and boom, it, it helped solve whatever the scenario was. And then Andrew Paul was up there and Andrew Paul told a story that was something was going on. And then I came in and kind of made some decision. Mm-hmm. And, and then Leif told another one. And so for whatever reason, they both told a couple stories each that were illustrating some leadership point. And the, in the stories, they, they, it made me look like this decisive good leader, which is cool, great. And, you know, but of course, you know, we're all telling stories about each other. But a couple of the leaders that were there, after this one session, they approached me and they they said something along the lines of you know you you just have such great natural leadership instincts and of course my ego is immediately like oh hell yeah right oh yeah yeah of course yeah, yeah, yeah. and then uh, you know so we had a quick conversation and they just said oh so it's so nice it's so cool to hear these stories where you you have these leadership instincts and i said yeah you know it's pretty cool i'm, I'm pretty cool you know kind of that ego uh idi- idiocy sure. and then as i thought about it and I went, we, we were on a break and as I thought about it it was actually a break at the end of the day as I thought about it, I thought well that's that's actually not cool at all because if my leadership is just some natural instinct then that implies that it's something that I can't teach you right I can't teach you I can't I can't teach you something that is only instinctive so As I thought about it, I also realized not only is that bad, but I also realized that there was plenty of times in my life where, especially when I was younger and I didn't have much experience as a leader, where I didn't make good decisions or I didn't even realize I needed to make a decision. And so as I'm sitting there thinking about this during this break, I realized that I had learned to lead and I had developed knowledge and and developed kind of a process that was so embedded in my brain that it seemed like instinct. And when these guys hear the story, it seems like instinct. But it's not instinct, it's, it's more of a process. And so I sat in my room and I went through and just sort of wrote down the, the process that I use, the things that I think about when I'm making a decision. And I, and since then I've, implemented that and teach it at Echelon Front and I've added a couple things to it since that time frame and we basically call it the extreme ownership leadership loop and the reason is because extreme ownership the book that Leif and I wrote kind of that that term just kind of encompasses the broad principles that we try and operate by and uh, there's a reason that I use the term loop. The reason I term, use the term loop is clearly taken from the OODA loop, observe, orient, decide, and act. And when you are making a decision, you can utilize that loop, observe, orient, decide, and act. And what that means is, uh, real quick brief on that, first of all, you observe, means you look around and see what's happening. Then you orient, you you see where you are in that in what you have observed, then you decide what you should do, and then you act on it. And once you've acted, you go back to looking around and see how your actions impacted what's happening, and then you orient yourself inside this new picture, and then you decide what you should do now, and then you act again, and you just keep running this loop. And 
every time you ha- take an action, it's going to change the situation a little bit, and then you have to observe that feedback, orient yourself in, with that new feedback, and then you make another decision, and this becomes a little loop that you run over and over again, and it comes from flying jets and in combat and dogfights, and it's a way that you win. And the way that you win is by making this, making decisions and observing and orient yourself, deciding what you're gonna do and acting faster than the other person can do it. And if you can do that, you'll win. And this also applies in jujitsu, obviously. Mm-hmm. So that's a loop that you need to run when it comes to making decisions. And this is a similar process to apply in this, in this leadership decision loop that I think through when I'm trying to make a decision. And again, it, a lot of times it seems like it's just some instinct, mm-hmm. but there's there's a thought process behind it. And listen, the OODA loop, for the most part, the OODA loop, I view it as more of a tactical decision in a physical realm against an enemy or a competitor. It's it's sort of a an interaction between you and someone else. Mm. In a physical and in usually in a physical domain, mm. whether it's fighter, whether it's tactical maneuver on the battlefield, that's why it's so <clears throat> applicable to combat. Because in combat, you're going against another person. So there's as you as you decide and act, that's gonna cause a reaction that you have to then calculate into your new observations, into your new orientation. And so the OODA loop really is about, it, it takes place in the physical realm for the most part. This, this loop that I'm talking about, this, this EO, this extreme ownership leadership loop, it, it's usually, I shouldn't say usually not about physical decisions, it's, but it's, it's equally applicable to conceptual ideas or conceptual plans or, and this is important, about human interaction that's not physical. Mm-hmm. It's, it's more the conflict of ideas. Yeah. So one loop is, in my mind, more of something that takes place in the physical realm. This EO leadership loop takes place more in the conceptual realm. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, fully. Like a, in a social, verbal, yes. all that, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, and what this loop does is it provides a checklist or a framework of things to consider while making a decision. And, and listen, when you first hear this, there's a bunch of them, a bunch of things to think about. And what's weird is I had been doing this for so long that it seemed to other people and really to me, as instinct. Mm. And it wasn't until I said, wait a second, is this really instinct or is this something I learned? Well, I know I used to not have it, therefore it can't be instinct. I must have learned it. What exactly am I thinking? Mm. What am I considering when I'm out there trying to make a decision in a leadership situation? So let's talk through some of these things and there's a whole bunch of dynamics going on here. And I don't wanna simplify this to a point where you go, oh, this is just a checklist. Here's the 19 or 14 or whatever number of things and you just follow this checklist because each one of these things is a conceptual item. Mm. There, there's a big difference between a conceptual idea and a physical thing because the physical thing is in this position. Mm. It has this mass, it has this weight, it has this, this uh, takes up this place in the world. Mm. An idea, a concept, a plan, by its very nature is fluid. So all these things, for the most part, are somewhat fluid. Mm. Now there's something about the first thing that I think about when I'm making some kind of a decision that's actually not fluid at all, and that's why it's number one. Mm. And that is time. That's the number one thing I think about. The the first thing that I consider when I'm making a decision is time, and the reason is, because this is the one thing that's not fluid, it, it is what it is. It is what it is, and you can't stop it. You can't stop it. You know, I was talking to Kerry Helton. Sure. You know him? K-Dog. K-Dog, that's right. He was talking about Marine Corps boot camp, and he had a good little uh, hint for anybody that's going through something tough. And his the thing that he thought about was 
these drill instructors, they, they might be all powerful in Marine Corps boot camp. They are all powerful, near godlike figures. Okay. But guess what? They can't stop the clock. Uh, and no one can stop the clock. And I, you, us, we, we have no influence over time. We, we do have influence over actions, clearly, but we don't have influence over time. That clock is going to keep going. Yeah. Look, you can, you, can, uh, you can get ahead of it by working hard, by thinking ahead, and that's why it's the first thing that I think about. Mm. Once, but, but you can't stop it, no matter what. Mm. That's why I can't stand being late. That's why w- when going to the airport, I'm gonna show up early. Mm. I look not crazy early, but I'm gonna show up early enough that nothing is going to make me panic. Mm. Nothing is gonna make me agitated. The TSA dude's taking his time, cool, I got time. (laughs) And you ever notice when you're late for something, everything goes against you? Yeah, yeah. Right? It feels like Like it's true. If you're you're on time, green lights. Yeah. If you're late, red lights. Red lights all day. Not only that, but weird red lights. (laughs) Right? Anomalous how, red light. How long is a red light when you're late? Uh, that thing yeah. is forever. Yeah, it's true. But the weird thing is, it's the same. Mm. It's just that you're different. Yeah. Your mentality's different. Mm-hmm. I tell you that story about the other day, speaking of like mentality. So, what was it REI? You remember sure. the REI? The store? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sports store is good. So, I'm in REI and I got a sprinter. Sure. Vehicle. Good vehicle for sure. Four wheel drive sprinter. No big deal. And and I get it, okay. So do you know that sprinters are a thing? Do you know that? I know that now, yes. Yeah. Uh, they're a thing. My wife told me that <clears throat> when she saw yours. Yep. And not only are they a thing, there's a there's also a big negative uh perception of them because they're expensive mm. and people like drive them around and they the and they're into People that might have sprinters <laughs> sure. might be into sort of outdoors type sports. Mm. And a lot of times people that are in outdoors type sports aren't, don't have a ton of money, oh, right? Gotcha. So, yeah. hey, look at rock climbing, mm-hmm. right? Rock climbing, Camp 4, Yosemite. The, their actual name for themselves is dirt bags. Mm. Hey, we don't have money. We live in a little freaking Toyota Corolla. We sleep in a tent. Like, that's what they're doing. Yeah, so yeah. you get those kind of people. You get surf bums. Yep. Right? Well, you and I have talked about the fact that bums yeah. is a lifestyle, and there's a bunch of them. Surf bums, jujitsu bums, rock climbing bums, <laughs> ski bums. So there's a bunch of bums, right? Yeah. Well, all of those lifestyles can also include people that might drive sprinters. The bougie. The bougie. Of the, the, of the, group. the bougie people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a bougie person, I guess, because yep. I got a sprinter. Yes. And guess what? I like to surf. I like to ski. I go to Yosemite, right? Mm-hmm. So I do those things. Mm-hmm. So I'm at REI to pick up a bicycle. Sure. And mm-hmm. as I'm pulling out, I'm leaving. And by the way, I'm in no rush whatsoever. Time is on my side. I, I'm yeah. listening to a, a, an audio book. I'm totally chill. I don't have to. It was, I, I think... We weren't recording that day. I had done like a couple calls in the morning for Echelon Front. Mm-hmm. I was in no rush, just mm-hmm. just kind of enjoying. Like I was working sure. in the morning and I was, it was like a nice little, a little mini vacation to be honest with you, driving yeah. to REI. You know, you go to REI, <laughs> you get yeah. up there, you get to look around, see yep. some cool gear. It's nice, yeah. So I'm, I'm, that's my mindset. <laughs> just cruising, and it, by yeah. the way, it's midday. So this isn't the weekend. This yeah. is like on a Tuesday or something. There's yeah. no, there's no, there's no panic in the world. No one's even in there. It's. It's like, it's after, I'll tell you how clear this was. It's after like the lunchtime rush Uh, on a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just complete chill. It's nice. So as I'm pulling out, I I won't try and explain the whole thing, but there's like a three-way intersection in the parking lot. Yeah. And I'm, so I back out my sprinter, and there's another truck that I'm now head-to-head with. Mm -hmm. He wants to go right to get out. I want to go left to get out. Mm -hmm. And in comes... A little, a little Volkswagen Vanagon Synchro. Okay. So what this is, this is a, a four-wheel drive Volkswagen van. Mm. Very rare, mm-hmm. very cool. Like one of the coolest, it's a very, I won't say it's one of the coolest vehicles in the world, but it's, it's definitely <laughs> in my top 
like <laughs> that's a cool vehicle. They're super rare. Mm-hmm. So Synchro, that's a four wheel drive mm-hmm. van. Oh yeah, a little you Volkswagen like van. Vans. Yeah, I love vans. So, <laughs> Hell yeah. which is why I have a Sprinter. Yes, sir. So, I see this van, and I'm kind of like, oh, dude, that's a sick, you know, four wheel drive Synchro van. It's super rare. They're they're hard to get, and the the truck. Wants to go right, he goes right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, cool. You know, that guy's being cool. He, he, or I give him like the little wh- hand wave, right? Yeah. Hey, go, because I'm super chill. Yeah. And by the way, I'm looking at this cool synchro. Yeah. So I give the guy a hand wave in the truck. I'm like, hey, man, go ahead. So he pulls out. And then I think that the, the synchro wants to make a right. Mm-hmm. So I, I look at him, I give him the hand wave. Just like, hey, man, come on. You know? yeah. And I, I was, all, you know, the next hand signal would have been thumbs up. I might have even, I may have even rolled down the window. <laughs> And said like, sweet ride. Yeah, that's yeah. a sweet Gibson. ride, man. Respect, props. Yeah. I give him the hand signal, like, yeah, go ahead, man. You you can make the right turn, and then I'll get out after you. You know, you get head of the line privileges. Yeah, yeah. Right? You go first. Letting him go. And guess what he does? He starts freaking. You know, of course, behind a windscreen, I can't hear what he's saying. Mm. Gets starts go, going crazy on me, like mm. like ah, he's like he's yelling. And and what he was basically saying was. He wanted me to move because the parking space I had just pulled out of, he had pulled into. And by the way, there was multiple parking spaces. Uh, there was yeah. no factor. But man, he was mad. Yeah. And he was like getting all hostile and like doing this to me. And I was just like, and of course, what I did, smiled at him and, and yeah, yeah. waved at him anyways. I didn't I give him props for his synchro. So if you're listening, <laughs> nice synchro, bro. And, and I hope your synchro and the fact that you have a cool vehicle like that, I hope that it soothes your soul a little bit. Because he's an older dude too. Mm. Oh, I'm well, he was at least my age. Mm. He wasn't a spring chicken, and there's no reason for him to be stressed out on a Tuesday at at, at 1300 or 1330 in the afternoon <laughs> at REI. No reason, man. Yes. No reason. Yeah. So, in his mind, whatever was happening for the time factor was a problem. For yeah. me, it was no factor. Mm. But you can't get that stuff back. You can't adjust yeah. time. So we have to stay ahead of time. So when I'm making a, a decision, the first thing that I'm going to assess is how much time do I have? Here's another thing. How fast are things changing? That's a time factor. Mm -hmm. You have to look at, okay, I see things are changing, but how fast are they changing? Because if they're changing rapidly, I might have to decide quicker. If they're changing slowly, well, maybe I can take a little bit more time. Are there things that I can do to buy myself more time? Mm -hmm. I know I said we can't control time, but you can do things that can earn you some time back. Maybe there's an iterative step that I can take that will slow things down a little bit on my side. Again, mm-hmm. I can't stop the clock, clock, but I can slow them down. So, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't have any control over time, and I'm gonna think about that. I'm gonna consider it. The number one element in my calculus is time. And, and here's something else that I, I realize. Some human beings have a better sense of time than others. This is just a, a thing. Mm. Some human beings are more aware of time than others. There are people that are late habitually, mm. right? Yes. Do we know this? We do know Actually, this somebody thing. at the council asked me like, hey, how do you do with Echo being late all the time? And I had to give them the information that you're actually not. <laughs> I think you've only been literally late once or twice yeah. for recording the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, it's once or twice. Mm. Now, do you cut it down to <laughs> Literally th- 32 seconds and actually if we included when you are maybe like 45 seconds late yeah. We might have to add to that number, but yeah. there's no Time there's a li- very small number of actual violations yeah, yeah. I think so. But there's there are some people that are late all the time There are people that think that things are gonna take five minutes and they take 20 and that's how they see time Yeah and so they're late all the time. So if you're one of those people, and this is gonna be a constant theme, if you're one of those people and you know that you don't understand time and you don't pay attention to time, the worse you are with time, if you're a person that's, that's habitually late, you, this should not only be the number one thing in your decision making, it should be number one and it should be printed in bold, large font mm. so that you make sure that you get it. Now listen, I'm g- actually good with time. Yeah. In fact, sometimes I'm even too good with time and I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that. Mm. Sometimes if I think, let's say, uh, 
let's say we were gonna record the podcast at 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, in order to record the podcast at 10 o'clock, I gotta leave at 9.30. That gives me a half an hour to get here. It only takes 15 minutes to get here, tops. Mm-hmm. Unless something wild happens or I hit every single red light or something. So I might be like, oh, I need to take out the garbage right now. Mm-hmm. But that's gonna take me an extra two minutes and there's a .0001% chance that I hit every red light and now that two minutes that it took me to take out the garbage, now I'm late. So yeah. I didn't take out the garbage. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I have to consciously say, yes, I can fit this in. Yes, I can get that done. Mm-hmm. And that that is a good thing to do. But I, I'm n- almost never late. I would say never, but of course, I'm sure there's been some time in the last 50 years where I was late for something, but I'm almost never late. And probably, and what I think is, that's because of this loop that I run in my head, I always think about time first. And Mm -hmm. that, so the reason I'm never late is because I think about this all the time. (laughs) So know yourself. And if you're a person that constantly underestimates how much time it'll take to do something, Mm -hmm. know yourself. Understand your own bias, and this is actually one of the things loop is understanding your own biases. This is where you got to run that and make sure that you're gonna have enough time to do something. Yeah. Check. Yeah, fully. And um, regardless of my <clears throat> record of not being late very much here, I am one of those people. That's that I underestimate. How did you put it? Oh, yeah. Underestimate how much time I have. How much or overestimate. Yeah. yeah. Overestimate. How much time you have, yeah. underestimate how much time something is gonna take. Yes. Exactly. Interestingly, if we were to talk about how often you were late for jujitsu, yeah. that's a big number. Yeah. That's a big number. The majority, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> the, it was weird. <laughs> Actually, in the beginning, when I, um, when I was coming up, I was never late, but, and I think you're the one who said this to me kind of bluntly a long time ago, where you said something like, oh, it's because you don't think it's important or something mm. like this, but, and I realized it's true, even though most of the time I wouldn't admit that admit that to the person that I'm late with or right. whatever, the entity or whatever. Cause when I worked in the nightclub, I was late most of the time. And I'm not saying, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying like, you know, I was supposed to be there at six and I was there at like 6.30. It yeah. wasn't that. It was the kind of 6.01, 6.03. How about 6.08? 6.08 from yeah. time to, you know, <laughs> as you get up past five minutes late, it was less, but, for, but you it not being important for mm-hmm. like that was literally the case and not to say my job wasn't important i'm not saying that i'm saying the fact of me being ahead of time or before six o'clock that wasn't important to me mm-hmm. if i was one two three four five minutes late that was fine with me for this reason now that i analyze it because i could be doing more important things than mm-hmm. in that five minutes you know or in that one minute or in that two minutes kind mm-hmm. of a thing kind of a thought i had yeah. in my head and now most more important things <sighs> taking a nap you know taking <laughs> watching stuff that the way i saw it was um and this is me totally analyzing it mentally it, i didn't this wasn't in my mind the whole time like yeah. oh yeah this this tv show is way more important than me getting it, it wasn't like that it was just as it turns out that like dang why would i essentially go to where I have to be kind of a thing mm-hmm. when I want to do this and I don't have to be there. I don't have to be there at 6.59 or 5.59. One of my SEAL buddies, when I was going to college, there was another SEAL that was on going to college as well. Mm-hmm. And we actually made a deal because in order to in order to be on time for something, you because of parking at this particular mm-hmm. college, and eventually I figured out that I would just throw my, bis- my bike in the back of my Van oh, and sick. just whip, you know, whip the bike out and bike to all the class. Park, park way away from campus, yeah, yeah. and just jump on my bike and drive or f- ride the bike. But when we would be studying together, and we'd be like, "Hey, we'll study at, you know, I'll, I'll meet you at nine o'clock to study." Hmm. We did this a few times, and then eventually, and you know, he was like a guy like me, married with kids, so we didn't want to. If we didn't have to be at campus, we didn't want to be there. Not yeah. to mention jujitsu, not to mention surfing. So there's a bunch of other things we'd all rather be doing. Mm-hmm. So we made a deal. I was like, hey, I'll see you around nine. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, because that way, if you rolled up and you, it took you an extra four minutes to 
find parking, you weren't like, dude. Yeah. Because yeah. the only way to ensure you weren't gonna be four minutes late was to be a half an hour early. Oh, yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, the yeah. only so, way to, it cost you 26 minutes yeah. of life yeah. in order to ensure that you weren't gonna be four minutes late. And so we, we were like, hey listen, around nine. And we actually had the conversation because both of us squared away like, hey, being late is the worst thing in the world. And we made a agreement, yeah. a gentleman's agreement that in this particular scenario, you had you had slack. Yeah, some grace. And when you got there, you got there. It wasn't gonna be 20 minutes late, right. but it was gonna be four minutes, it might be six minutes, it might be three minutes. Yeah. So we had that little gentleman's agreement. So the target is nine. Yeah, target you know. is nine and I'll be there. Yeah, and if yeah. you're not there, I know 100% why. Yeah. It's because you weren't gonna leave 26 minutes earlier yeah. To be there on time because it didn't make sense because I'd rather he was with his kids or he was surfing or he was doing jujitsu. Actually, he did jujitsu, but we, I, he, I knew he was doing something that was more important than sitting and waiting for me to show up to prove that we could both be on time. Yeah, so that that's interesting how you say, it, or that's an interesting concept because mm -hmm. that's essentially the agreement I made with my work. Yeah. They didn't make that agreement, but I did too, where it's like, hey, I'm not going to give up because it was the same kind of scenario where mm -hmm. you have to look for parking. Sure, you could pay for parking, but now what? I got to pay extra to be at work kind of a thing. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm not saying that that should be the case or shouldn't be the case. I'm just saying that's what I thought at the time. That's, so That was the agreement in Echo's head. Yes, sir. Exactly <laughs> right. So, you know, downtown San Diego, 6 o'clock p.m., especially on those Thursday, Friday, Saturday scenarios, it's like, bro, it's hard to find parking or it can be anyway. So, yeah, so I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go at the, uh, my opportune time, my best time in my mind. And, hey, if it's if I'm struggling finding parking, I'm yeah. struggling finding yeah. parking. You know, that's in your mind. It was no fact. The gentleman's agreement. Because you would have had to leave legitimately probably a half an hour early to ensure 100% that you were going to be on yep. time. Yeah, probably a little bit more. Exactly right. Like to ensure, yep. like the kind, no, you got to be here yep. before six or whatever kind of a thing to ensure. Yeah, it's like half an hour. Yep. It's like, bro, it's not even in my mind. It's not even fair. How about this? How about this? <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll decide a reasonable amount of time I have to leave the house. How about that? And if parking is abnormally <laughs> scarce. Or hey, traffic. That's, hey, we're going to pay that price together. How about yeah. that? The, tr the traffic thing is weird, too, because th that's an excuse that people use. Like, oh, yeah, I really hit traffic. Yeah. And if you live in California, mm -hmm. you're like, bro. Yeah, yeah you got to. You got to calculate for that. Come on. Yeah. Yep, I agree. And it's kind of not a valid excuse unless, let's say you and I work in an office every single day and we, we, we make that agreement. Like, hey, our goal is nine o'clock, but I understand. I don't want you to leave an hour early mm -hmm. to make sure you get here at that time. And I go, hey man, you leave your house, like you said, you leave your house before this time. Reasonable. I, I knew that there's gonna be some, there could be some variables. Yeah, and especially if they're like, the variables really vary because like the traffic thing in, I don't know about your roots, you know, in San mm. Diego, whatever, but as far as the routine goes, very loose routine that I have, it's, <laughs> I know when the traffic is going to be, yeah. you know, it's pretty predictable. Yeah. You know, you got your anomalous accident or, right. or some hold up on the road every once in a great, great, great while. But so it yeah. is, I, to me anyway, I think that factoring the traffic is is a fair thing. Like you gotta you gotta hey, if it takes fifteen more minutes on this Tuesday after work, rush hour, yeah. yeah, versus Sunday morning or whatever, then that's part of the agreement. You gotta you gotta factor that Put in. That in the I think. But Sunday morning, yeah. let's say Sunday morning, every time we're uh, recording and then or whatever we're doing, and then no traffic, and then one day there's like traffic because mm -hmm. there's some event at the beach or something. Yeah. I do expect a little bit of, uh, what do you call it? Leeway? Leeway. Okay. <laughs> we'll kind see of. about that. I guess. So that is time. First thing you gotta be thinking about. Causes stress. Get ahead of it. Uh, the next thing, and this should really come as no surprise, the next things that I think about are the four laws of combat leadership. Cover, move, simple, prioritize, and execute, and decentralize command. But I think about them in a very particular way. So if I'm making a decision, the first thing I'm gonna think about is cover and move. The number one thing is, am I supporting my teammates? Does this help the team? Mm. Am I putting my team first? 
So, so I, I want you to think about that. The first thing I think about is time because I have no control about it. The second thing I do is make sure that I am not putting myself ahead of the team and I'm not making a decision that's going to leave anyone else on the team in the lurch, mm. right? And this will immediately vector you in the correct direction. Because any time that you, as a human, are making a decision and it's based on benefiting you, there's a really good chance that that's a bad call. And from a leadership ch perspective, there's a huge chance. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's a bad call. Mm -mm. <laughs> the, the, the military term is supporting distance. So Echo, if I'm working with you, if my fire team or my squad or my platoon is supporting your fire team, your squad, your platoon, I have to stay within a distance where I am able to support you. That means usually my weapons can cover where you may be attacked from. And my communications can speak to you directly. And generally speaking, I can, in, a, in an infantry scenario, I want to be where I can actually see you. I can actually, you know, put on my night vision or at least pull out my, you know, pull out my binoculars and see where you are and go, I got him. I know exactly where he is. The minute that we're out of that supporting distance, there's going to be a problem. So from a, like a tactical perspective, that's a great thing to think about. But from a leadership perspective, cover and move is am I being supportive of the rest of my team? And if you're not, it's gonna be a problem. Now, here's a couple things to watch out for. Some people have a tendency to look out for themselves. Mm -hmm. And some people, if they have that tendency, one of the worst things about that tendency is, that tendency is they don't think anyone else can see it. Mm. And I'm telling you right now, when people are getting screwed, they see it. And in whatever subtle way, whatever whatever maneuver you're doing that you think no one else can see that you're leaving people, mm. everyone can see it. They can see it, thousand percent. They can see what's going on. So if you think you might be a person, and this goes back to what are your own personal balance, uh, biases. If you are a person that goes through life that kind of looks out for yourself, this is where you need to index in the right direction appropriately to make up the fact that you're a little bit of a person that takes care of yourself. So just just watch out for that. And the way you watch out for that is by, when you're making a decision, this is the second thing you ask yourself. Am I making this decision and it's only gonna benefit me? And more important, am I supporting my teammates with this decision that I'm gonna make? And if you're not, reconsider. The next one is, Keeping things simple. Uh, how complicated is this decision? Or how much complexity will this decision add to our situation? Mm. What, and that's really a great way to think about it. Will this decision take our current situation and simplify it? If it's going to do that, that's very, very helpful. Mm. If this decision is going to make things more complex, this is, Usually not a good decision. Mm. So the minute you say, oh, we just need to get some more people down here into the mix, mm. and all of a sudden you think to yourself, wait a second, that's actually going to make things more complicated. Mm. Reconsider. Again, you can still, you can, hey, any one of these things that I'm saying right now, there are situations where you, you have to still push through it. Mm. It's when you're not thinking about it. It's not, when you're not being intentional about your decision, that's when you're gonna have a problem. Mm. Most important, when you don't even recognize, a lot of times people are making things more complex, they don't even know it, because mm. they're not considering the things that I'm talking about. Mm. Sometimes they're screwing people over, they're not even thinking about it. Mm. That's, look, there's sometimes where I'm screwing over Echo with my decision, but I don't, you know, and I just don't, don't think he's gonna notice or I don't care. Sometimes I'm doing it and I just, I, I, I don't even recognize the fact that, oh, I didn't realize Echo was gonna get left out in the cold. One time freaking, <laughs> <laughs> Leif Babin, we were staying in a hotel at the muster mm -hmm. and we had like, uh, I had a room, he had a room and they were ju they were joined by um, like a, a unit room or whatever, mm -hmm. like, a, like a, what's that word? A common area. Yeah, a common area. Mm -hmm. But actually my, the, the entrance to my room 
was through the common area. Mm. And then, so to get into my room, you'd go through the common area, and then I'd go into my room. Yeah. Leif had, he could go into the common area and then to his room, or he could go through the hallway. Yeah, yeah. So we went to PT, and, and I forget how it happened, but he locked the common area door. Mm. <laughs> so, and then we got split up when I came back. I didn't have the key to his room. You know that little, you know, like the key, the mechanical yeah. lock on a door? Old school. He had swung that thing shut, so, oh, so, I could, so we were laughing. Okay. Uh, he was actually trying to help me out, but he locked me out of my room, gotcha. which was awesome. <laughs> sure, awesome. He didn't know. Right. He didn't know that he didn't know that we were all both going to leave through his room. Mm. So, anyways, my point is sometimes you're doing things and you don't understand the secondary effects. Mm. So that's one of the that's one of the benefits of having a checklist, mm. because the minute you say, "Oh, wait a second." Jocko might actually have to come back in and I won't be with him, so therefore I should open the door from the inside. Cool, got it, done. Sometimes I say, oh, I wanted to do this thing. Oh, but am I really covering for Echo? No, I'm not. I gotta help him out, okay. So this the, one of the uses of running this loop and going through this checklist is you make sure you're not doing something that doesn't make sense, that you didn't, that you weren't aware of. So make sure that you are covering for the rest of your team, make sure you are putting the team first when you make a decision. Mm. Next one, simple. Well, I already covered simple, uh, making sure things aren't complicated. The next one is prioritize and execute. Does this decision that I'm about to make match the pri- priorities that we should be focused on? That, that's, a, that's, the, that's step number one. Hey, wait a second, I'm about to go in this direction. Does that even help us getting where we're, we wanna go? Mm. Then you kind of have to dig a little bit deeper. Are the priorities that I'm focused on right now, are they even correct? Mm. Because sometimes what you're focused on right now changes and you have to adapt. Mm. If you and I are rolling and I'm trying to defend an arm lock, you're trying to arm lock me and all of a sudden you get my neck, guess what the priority is? (laughs) Priority is my neck, (laughs) protect your neck, Mm. right? So priorities are going to change. And so you have to make sure when you make a decision that you're supporting the right priority or you're supporting the priority that you have designated and you also have to double check that the priority that you're focused on is the right one or the priorities, plural, that you're focused on are the right ones, plural. And then, once again, you gotta check your own tendencies because some people have a tendency to get distracted. Mm. And if you're a person that has tendency to get distracted, then you need to double down on making sure you focus on the right priorities. Some people have a tendency to try and accomplish too much. They have the tendency to be like, those people might usually have a also a bad relationship with time where they think they can do more than they have time for. Mm. And then they also say, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. Mm. Even though I have a good relationship with time, sometimes I do try and bite off more than I can chew. Mm. But not very often, most of the time, I don't do that. Most of the time, I could actually take the garbage out before I go to jujitsu. Mm-hmm. But I don't wanna be two minutes late, so therefore I'm gonna take the garbage out later. I should've taken it out. Mm-hmm. I should've rolled the dice that there's a point zero zero one percent that I'm a minute and 28 seconds late. Mm-hmm. So know what your tendencies. There's people that have a tendency to shift priorities too often, similar to being distracted, right? Mm. But they're like, no, we need to focus on this, and then three days later, no, we need to focus on this, and then three days later, no, we need to focus on this. That actually happens. Uh, And of course, there's some people that get fixated on a priority that may or may not matter as time goes on. So that can happen as well. So when you are making a decision, Check your priority list and make sure that your decision supports the priority and then also double check that the priority you're focused on or priorities that you are focused on are the right ones. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Uh, Decentralized command. Here's a really good rule of thumb if you're in a leadership position. The decision that I'm about to make, can I decentralize and delegate the action? So as soon as I'm thinking of doing something, I think to myself, oh, can I turn this over to someone else? So, hey, we gotta get that building cleared. Yes, we're gonna clear that building. Hey, Leif, 
grab your squad, grab your platoon, grab your team, go get that building clear. Can I turn it over to someone else? Hey, Echo, we need to uh, come up with some cool graphics for this event that we're gonna do. Can I turn that over to you? I wanna know if I can, because my goal is to not be focused on doing things myself, because the minute that I'm doing something myself, I can't look up and I can't look out, which is going to impair my ability to lead. This also allows me to be aware. And again, so much of this is awareness. It allows me to be aware that sometimes there's something that I I do have to do. Mm -hmm. And I've gotta say, hey, Echo, I've gotta go do this thing, cover me. Mm -hmm. Or hey, Echo, I'm gonna be going and executing on this thing, watch my back. Or look up and out while I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that, again, it's okay to make those decisions as long as you're aware of it. Mm -hmm. But the minute I go, hey, I'm gonna go execute this thing, and I don't tell you to look out, now, now we get flanked. Yeah. We're looking, hopefully, with decentralized command, we're, we're hoping, and the goal, is that we are only doing things that only we can do. I only wanna do, do things that only I can do. Everything else, I wanna, I wanna have someone else on the team do it. That's the goal. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the things that only I can do, I eventually want to train someone else to be able to do those things. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> How do you balance the um Okay, remember you know the your your sto- uh it was your story about um somebody came to you was like, you know, I need this advice or whatever and you mm-hmm. said and put them in charge of something and they put and then that person put them in charge of something that was really yeah, undesirable yeah, yeah, yeah. like cleaning toilets cleaning, cleaning toilets like at SEAL yeah. Team 2 on the second deck. You know, yeah. That was the that was the mission someone was tasked with in order to give them more responsibility. Right. And it didn't help the situation, it made them more mad. So so how do you find the balance because kind of in a way that kind of in a matter of speaking translates over to what you're talking about now where it's like, hey, can I delegate this? Can I delegate this? Which a lot of a lot of times, depending on the yep. project of delegation, it can empower someone. It can help the whole group because they can do this while you're doing quote unquote more important things yep. or whatever. How do you balance like what you delegate them to do with something important or whatever yep. versus something that because you know some things need to be done, but no one really wants to do it kind of a yep. thing. Hey, if something sucks. I'm I'm gonna get in there and do it somehow. This is the picking up brass story, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Because picking up brass, it's real easy to say, uh, you know what, guys, I gotta go back to uh, meet with the commanding officer. I gotta go back and prep a brief. So I'll be back in the air conditioned office back in San Diego while you guys are out here in 120 degree heat, heat picking up brass. Yeah. Real easy to say that. Yeah. So decisions like that, I'm gonna be very cautious and I'm gonna weigh my leadership capital, which we'll get to, because if look. Does this mean if the commanding officer's like, hey, I need a brief tomorrow, I'm like, sorry, sir, I'm picking up brass. Yeah. No, yeah. it doesn't mean that. But I better prioritize building a relationship with the troops, making sure they understand that I don't mind getting my hands dirty, don't mind getting my knees freaking cut up, don't mind having blisters on my hands from picking up hot brass out in the desert. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. So. There's some, there's some variables that we have to weigh into. Mm-hmm. And that's also why good deals, give them away. Yeah. You know, hey, someone's gotta go ashore early and, and spend an extra four days in wherever, this nice vacation area of Thailand. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm on, no, I'm gonna go on the yeah. Advan. No, it's like, no, <laughs> yeah. no, hey, Echo, you got it, take these guys, make sure we have you know the stuff that we need for the training in Thailand. And you're like, awesome. Right, yeah. So that's how I weigh it out. Just, yeah. just I have to, I have to, I have to assess the suck meter. Yeah. And if you're a person that always sees the suck meter high and runs the other way, everybody knows it. Yeah. So don't do it. So it's kind of a little balancing act game within the game kind oh, of a thing. 100%. Yeah, because if you just be rigid, or this is what it seems like anyway, if you just be rigid to the, hey, I'm always going to delegate, and then it's when it comes to, you know, I'm gonna oh trash needs to be taken out. Yeah, I got so I got an extra three minutes or whatever yeah. now, but no, no, no. I'm sticking to the rule. Dele- delegate, delegate. Right. You know, kind of a thing. No, things that suck, try not to delegate. Yeah. And, and look, that could also mean if you're the fr- platoon commander, guess what you're doing all day? Yeah. Cleaning the toilets, picking up brass. Yeah. Like you could be, you could assign yourself every task that kind of sucks. Yeah, and we don't want to do that. Yeah. So we have to put that into the calculus. Okay. We don't. Just delegate things that suck. In fact, you know, Leif, Leif tells a story. We were going through the, our dive portion of training. Mm-hmm. 
and diving kind of sucks, you know? It's cold, wet, miserable, long, boring, and some people think. And so a lot of guys, given the opportunity, they have meetings to attend during dive. They have uh, whatever, reports to write. Yeah. And Leif and Seth, you know, they were kind of like surprised. Here I am, got my wetsuit on, got my fins out, we're ready to go dive, ready to go spend four hours turtle backing around San Diego Bay and freaking three hours on bag mm. on, in the darkness, you know, bored out of your mind. Mm. But that's what you do. Yeah. So that's one of those things where if it sucks, Use caution while delegating. Make sense? Fully, yeah, fully. It's a, yeah, it's the kind of more of the approach to it, right? Where it's like you got to understand the overall picture of what you, what are you doing here, you kind know, and why are you doing it, kind of a thing. So if you, if you have more important things to do, you delegate these things. They're all important because they're all pieces of the puzzle, right? But um, yeah, you, there's another, like I said, game kind of going on where you want to be looking out for everyone in that little additional way, mm. you know, and you're gonna sacrifice little parts of kind of yourself yep. Yep. to kind of do it. Um, so we kind of got the four laws of combat covered. The next thing I'm gonna think about, and this is a big one, is making sure that our ego is not driving this decision, which you would be shocked and dismayed at the number of decisions that are driven by ego, driven by ego. They're, they're almost 100% in some cases driven by ego. Am I making this decision based on my ego? Am I imposing it as punishment, subconscious punishment on someone who questioned me? <laughs> Am I forcing this to prove, to echo that my plan was the better plan? So, you have to be extremely cautious of that. And, and the thing that we have to be careful of is that our, our ego can absolutely, or, or not even, your ego is going to lie to you. Yeah. That's what our ego does. Our ego is going to lie to us. And so, my, and, and if it's tricky too. Your ego's smart. Your ego's, it's like the devil. You ever seen the movie The Exorcist? Yes. So in the movie The Exorcist, the devil knows the things to say to the priest that's gonna like get him. Yeah. And your ego is the, equally smart as the devil. Mm -hmm. And it knows, you, you, my ego's like, hey, hey Jocko, this, hey, I know I get extreme ownership. I, you, you, I, hey, I buy into extreme ownership 100%. Yep. But this time, this, this actually really is Echo's fault. Echo's plan's really not as good as yours. You should, I get it. I know you want to be <laughs> humble, but hey, if you're humble now, it's actually going to cost you in the long. That's the way your ego talks to you. Yeah. It's like a, a little savage in there, mm -hmm. just manipulating. So you got to be very careful of that. The other thing that happens is if, it's your, if your ego's running the decision, have you listened to anybody else? Have you listened to other people with an open mind? Do you have an open mind? So be careful of that. Because sometimes we're, we're listening, but we're not hearing. And then a, a good little sanity check. Am I doing this? A am I using this decision? Am I driving this decision with my rank, with my position, even with my experience? And let me explain what that sounds like. The, the idea of driving, it sounds good, right? It sounds good for me to say, hey, I'm more experienced. That's why I'm making this decision. Yeah. But that's the equivalent as, Dude, I've been doing this for 20 years. You need to shut up and listen to me. Yeah. Any of those things. If the main driver of your decision and the way you're convincing people is through experience or through rank or through position or authority, you you already lost. Mm -hmm. you, you already, let me, let me not say you lost, but, but you need to reconsider what's happening. Mm -hmm. Because if I can't articulate to you, Echo Charles, why I made this decision without saying, because I outrank you, or because I'm in charge of this, or because I have, because I've been, I've done this type of thing 20 times, if I have to go there, that means I'm not really, I can't articulate why we're going with my plan. And that's a problem, and the problem, most likely, is my ego. <laughs> so use caution on that. And right tied up next to that is emotion. 
am I making an emotional decision? I mean, what a smart little thing to check on. And if you check on it, you're going to realize that it's a bad, but that it's a bad move. People make deci- emotional decisions all the time. And by the way, they almost never turn out good. Mm. Am I mad? Am I frustrated? Am I vengeful? Am I fearful? Mm. Am I guilty? Guilt is an emotion mm. that'll make you do something that you know you shouldn't do. Fear is an emotion that'll make you do something that you shouldn't do. Frustration. I'm getting frustrated. You know what? Just go ahead and do it, right? These are horrible things. So check with yourself and make sure that your emotions are not driving the decision. Now listen, here's the other thing. Here's the dichotomy is your emotions do still have to be part of the calculus. They got to be part of the calculus. You got to calculate your own emotions to get the answer. You got to calculate the emotions of the team to get the answer. Because if the team is all mad about doing this thing. And I say, you know what though? Logically, we should do it. Yeah. All right, guys, this is the logical answer. Go do it. And all it does is make everyone matter. First of all, are you going to execute well? Are you going to do a good job? Are you trustworthy while you're out there and you're mad? What did it do to my leadership capital? There's all these problems it's going to cause. Mm. All these problems it's going to cause. So I have to put emotions into the calculus, but it can't be the overwhelming driver of my decision making. It has to be a component, but it should be a small component in most cases. Meaning, if I know that making some decision is gonna make the entire team totally irate, I need to weight it a little bit more because the emotion's stronger. But you have to calculate it. And if you're not aware of it, if you're not paying attention to it, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna work out the way you want it to. It's gonna actually cause Bad decisions. Next one, perspective. Perspective, people throw this around. People throw this around. Oh, what? Make sure you know, know what other people's perspectives is. But they only throw it around when they think about it. But a lot of times we get locked into our perspective and that's bad. I want to see as many different perspectives on a subject, on a topic, on an idea that I can. I want to know my peers' perspectives. I want to know my subordinates' perspectives. I want to know my superiors' perspectives. I want to know my competitors' or my enemies' perspective. What are they actually seeing right now? The more angles I see of a target or of a problem, the more the, the better I can understand it. And the better I can understand it, the better off I'm going to be. We have this thing when you when you do a, a reconnaissance of a target, a building or a compound. When you when you do it, what you try and do is you try and move around the entire perimeter mm-hmm. over a period of time. You try and see it from every different possible angle. Mm-hmm. If you don't see something from every possible angle, there's something that you're missing, and that thing that you're missing could be a critical component of the target or of the problem. So by asking your subordinates, "Hey, what does this look like to you?" By asking your peers, like, hey, what do you see here? By asking your boss, hey, what does it look like from your perspective? By doing that, it's gonna give you a better understanding of the target, of the problem, of the issue, and then you can better formulate a plan. And by the way, my default mode is to take, when someone else says, hey, Jocko, I see a solution, my default mode is to try and utilize their solution, try and utilize their plan, try and utilize their idea. That's my default mode. Now, if there's a leadership vacuum, and I wrote about this in Leadership Strategy Tactics Field Manual, if there's a vacuum, no one's making a decision, sure, I'm gonna step in. I'm I'm gonna give you some little hints here. When there's a leadership vacuum, I'm gonna let that leadership vacuum develop it a little bit extra, just a little bit extra. I'm gonna let that void Let the presence of that silence, of that non-direction, of that lack of leadership, I'm gonna let it sit there for an extra second, two seconds. Why am I doing that? Because I want everyone to know that there's a leadership void. And it doesn't take long, it takes a second, takes two seconds, three seconds, and all of a sudden everyone goes, oh, and when everyone knows there's a leadership void, everyone is primed to execute. Everyone is ready to receive orders. Mm -hmm. So, 
if there's a leadership void, I'm gonna make sure everyone can feel it. By the way, those extra two, three seconds, I'm actually confirming the plan in my head that I've formulated. So now my plan is gonna be two or three seconds further developed and better. And then I make the call. And yes, I'm gonna make a small call, a iterative decision. And if someone else happens to make a call at the same time, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna support their call. Well, good, because that's my default mode. My, my default mode is to support someone else's call. Because that is the easiest way to move forward with a plan. The easiest way to move forward of a, with a plan isn't with Echo has a plan and I have a plan to try and convince Echo that my plan is better. The easiest way, the quickest way to move is to say, Echo, sounds good, I'm on board, what do you want me to do, how can I support? Mm-hmm. Unless Echo's plan is freaking, you know, horrible. Mm-hmm. Actually, let me rephrase that in a more distinct way. Unless Echo's plan is unviable, mm-hmm. it's an unviable plan that will not work. If it's a minimally viable plan, if it's, you know, if it, it'll get the job done, mm-hmm. you have a minimally viable plan and I have a viable plan, so that means mine might be a little bit better. But now I have to convince you of that. I have to explain why. And by the way, when I say I'm gonna support your plan, I can probably bring some additional viability to your plan that can make your plan better than mine was in the first place. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's the easiest way to do it. Now, what do we need to think about here is we need to think about the fact that we almost all, here's a bias, that almost all of us have the same bias, which is my idea is the best idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's, that's our general consideration as humans, that my idea is the best idea. So know that you have that bias. I actually go hard against that bias. And quite frankly, sometimes I go too hard against that bias. Mm. Sometimes someone's got a plan, I'm like, eh. And it might not, it might be minimal, really minimally viable. <laughs> sure. And I'll be like, you know what, we'll go with it. Yeah. Sometimes I do that a little bit too much. Mm. So I know that. Why do you think you do that? I just want to be supportive, yeah. don't want to be a, a imp- imposing tyrant on the team. Yeah. And someone, and, and generally, I'm like, Thinking to myself, well, you know, my plan's good, but eh, you know, we can probably make Echo's plan worth. I would rather do it. Look, why? I'll tell you why. I literally believe what I'm saying right now. Mm-hmm. It's usually easier for me just to support your plan than it is for me to convince you of this other plan and explain it to you. I can uptake your plan pretty quick. I get it. Cool. Let's go execute that thing. I, mm-hmm. I'm supporting you. Let's run with it. Yeah. And then I'm detached from your plan, so I can see a little bit more. When it's my plan, all of a sudden I gotta, I gotta manage that whole thing, and I'm staring right into it. And mm-hmm. I don't know how good you are at being detached and and trying to adjust things. You might not be as good as me. So you know what? I'm gonna let you. Detachment is a harder skill than, than the planning and execution. Yeah. Or it's a rarer skill. Yeah. If I tell you to go and execute something, there's a good chance you'll be able to do it. If I tell you, hey, I'm gonna go execute. You detach and sit on the outside and try and give me some broad guidance about how I can do better. That's a harder job mm-hmm. because most pe- most of the time you'll be like, I'm starting to execute my plan. You're going to jump in there with me. You're going to start doing it too. Mm-hmm. So that's why I sort of over index on allowing, on, on providing support or allowing people to do things that maybe I don't 100% agree with. Yeah. Right? I mean, you've done some stuff where I- I've been like, well, <laughs> that didn't seem to be the best idea, was it? And we can look back post mortem. Is this the Christmas music thing? Christmas music, that's a good one, <laughs> okay. right? All right. Mm-hmm. You know? Sure. Some things happen, you're like, well, that's not good. That's not what we were looking for at all. Didn't you say you didn't even know that was a Christmas song? Yeah, that's correct. Bruh. I know. Uh, bruh, I don't know. Sorry. I do now, though. So, you know. We got to watch out for that one. Yes. So, that's the deal. It's perspective. You have to actually pull yourself back and try and see other people's perspectives. And the best way to do that is by talking to them, asking them good questions about what they see. Mm. You're not gonna be a a freaking, uh, 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 what's the word? A psychic Mm. that I can see what Echo sees. I don't go into a meditative state and and go into your brain. No, I go, hey Echo, what does that look like to you? This (laughs) this isn't freaking, this isn't freaking. uh, Remote uh, viewing. This isn't remote viewing. Mm. This isn't remote viewing. What's the deal with remote? Do you think it's true? I don't know. They had big programs with it in the military. There's a movie about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't. If it is true, I don't know how it works Mm -hmm. at all. It doesn't seem. Could be you guys are really good at guessing. Maybe. You know? (laughs) Well, a lot of the, what do you call, like the psychic, you know, mediums and mind readers and stuff, that's 
as it turns out, from what I understand, what it is, it's like it's not guessing, but it's like guessing about like they they react to cues with oh, you like yeah. how you respond so it's like i'm seeing red and then if they do mm-hmm. something they're like okay red is something you know mm-hmm. do you know a person name and they go real basic names yeah. first and so because yeah. i'm feeling a john or a jim yeah or a, you know yeah, like what that would be even thing. even broader is like do you know anyone that's do you know anyone that's experienced trouble in their life right now yeah. and if i see you like <gasps> then yeah. i'm like it, wait are they sick? You know what yeah. I mean? And, and at the like, same time, my mind is awake. Do I? Then I search for everyone yeah. in my whole. It's like whether it's yeah. significant or not, you kind of make it significant. So it's like a dance going on. Maybe we'll have a remote viewer on the program. Because the military had like a remote viewer group. Yeah. People that that's what they did. Sit in a room and go into a meditative state and look for, you know, missile launch pads. Yeah. Stuff like this. I guess the argument for and against it in a matter of speaking, is kind of the same thing where it's like your brain is so complex and we, you know, there's a lot of stuff about your brain and all Mm -hmm. this stuff that we don't know. So it's possible, but at the same time, it's kind of like, all right, well, (laughs) I don't see how your eyes can like see something that they don't see and it's your brain, you know, like it doesn't make sense. Given what we do know, it doesn't make sense. Eddie Bravo has a podcast now and it's called Look Into It. (laughs) <laughs> I think it's called Look Into It, okay. which is a freaking yeah. great name. And this makes yeah. me think, you know, maybe we need to get Eddie Bravo to look into it look and into see what's up. See what's up with remote viewing. Because he, he's looking into a bunch of stuff. Oh, right? yeah. You know why it's called Look Into It? I think it's because of what I just said. Is there another reason? Yeah. Well, that's a thing that there was a. Um, oh, is it a meme? Kind of. Right. That he. They, he was on a podcast. I forget which one it was, but it was one you know one of Joe Rogan's podcasts. He was on there, and then they got into this heated like argument about uh-huh. you know Something. one of the things that Eddie Bravo really kind of purports. Maybe it wasn't UFOs. What was it? I don't know. Nine Eleven. Maybe uh-huh. I don't know. So I, I forget what it was. But he kept saying, "You just haven't looked into it. You just haven't <laughs> looked into it." Kind of you know. I mean, that was kind of his defense to a uh, lot of things. But he said it so many times that like it became yeah, a thing. Well, it's a great name for his podcast because yep. that's what he's Agreed. doing. He's out there looking into looking it. Into right? it the weird thing about looking into things these days is you can kind of find what you want to find. Whatever you want. Right? Yeah, that's true. Huh? There's a, there's all kinds of things to find what you want. Yeah, to find. We have if this you look trampoline, into it deep like, enough. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, and, and this, okay. So we have this trampoline. It's re, it's called a rebounder. Mm-hmm. It's like essentially like a regular little trampoline, but mm-hmm. it's like I don't know, more robust. I don't know, whatever. It's How big is it? Like the regular size ones, like this table, maybe a little bigger. That's not a regular size. So when I think trampoline, I think of something that you uh, that is like. 15 feet across. Yeah, yeah. Like but a you, leg breaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so this thing is, so this is like one of those fitness trampolines yes. where yeah, you yeah. jump on it. Yeah, exactly okay, right. Cool. But it's the one where it's like it, there's no noise. It's called a rebounder, if okay. I'm not mistaken. So anyway, one of the claims mm. is that, oh, yeah, it does something to your lymph system. Okay. Like right. it like does something yeah, yeah. to it. Elevates it somehow. Makes yeah, it better. You know, the pressure. And it per- and here's the thing. It, that could be 100% true. It could well, be. Look into it. <laughs> yeah, you look into it. So I go and look into And, you know, my wife, she's like saying, yeah, my dad told me. And this, and he has one. Mm-hmm. And let's face it. The kids jump on it. It's fun. That's mm, yeah. my main ca- kind of catalyst or whatever. You didn't even have to look into that. Yep. So <laughs> lymph or no lymph systems. It's fun. The kids freaking love it. And whatever. It's good for your legs, too, obviously. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, but I'm like... If I'm going to talk trash, which I do just jokingly because I don't mm-hmm. I don't know if it helps your lymph system or not. If I'm going to talk trash, I should at least look into it. So I looked <laughs> into it and sure enough, it says, yeah, it does this to your lymph system. But it then but then just like what you're alluding to, where you kind of got to consider the source, you know, and then, oh, what, what, what I'm going to spend my day looking into this five websites that said this. Now I got to determine the credibility. So it's like hard, you know? You gotta yeah, there's all kinds of credit because you can make a website that has, oh, click here for the supporting documentation, but you also wrote the supporting documentation, exactly right? right. Yeah. So even when you're looking into it, you're not yeah. looking in the right place. <laughs> yeah, it's true, man. Holy cow. What, 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 what a platform is Eddie Bravo's? Do you know what? It's on a platform. I don't know if it's on an open platform. Oh, I don't know. I have to look into it. Look actually, into <laughs> so there you go. Uh, perspective. Mm-hmm. You got to look into some other people's perspectives, and and figure out what the whole target, what the whole problem looks like. So there you go. Perspective. 
Spend some time, put that on your checklist. The perspective you have, by the way, is not the whole thing. And there's a good chance that your perspective is actually wrong, right? Hey, I don't see any enemy on this target. All you need to do is go 90 degrees in the other direction, you can see a bunch of enemies sitting behind a building. Yeah. Hey, make your bias that your perspective is probably a little bit off. Maybe even make your bias that you're that you're wrong. Yeah. That what you see is not the whole picture. That what you see is actually a bad picture. That's what I think of my perspective. Yeah. I think, uh, you know what, this is what I see, and I know, my, my gut instinct is like, I know I, I'm not seeing everything, and there's more to the picture, and I need to figure out what that is. Make that part of your checklist. Mm. Next thing is mission. So, so is the decision that you're about to make, does it support the mission that you're actually trying to execute on? And not uh, actually more important than that, does it support your overall strategic mission? And this is this causes all kinds of there's a there's a term out there. Have you ever heard the term mission creep? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty common term now. Yeah. This is because people don't run this leadership loop in their brain and they don't ask themselves, hold on a second, what's our mission? What's our overall mission? And is this in support of it? If I make the decision, it's going to help us reti- uh, reach our strategic goals. All kinds of people make that mistake. Mm. And we can't allow for that. So what you do is you just run a quick check and say, hold on, does this support the tactical mission that we're trying to execute? Does this support the strategic mission that we're trying to achieve? And if it doesn't, you know it's a bad decision. Mm. Next one, leadership capital. And this is one that I recently added to this list. And 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 the reason that I added to the list is because at some point I was having a discussion with somebody and I realized, actually, let me rephrase this. I was making a decision and I realized that the main thing that I was calculating was well, how much this was gonna cost me from a leadership capital perspective. Okay. And so, so first of all, what is leadership capital? Leadership capital is the fact that you can only get people to do so much. As a leader, you can only get people to do so much. There's a, there's a, there's a, when you ask somebody to do something, it costs. It costs you leadership capital. And if they don't want to do it, it costs more. Mm. And if they want to do it, then it costs less. And if they do it on their own accord, then it's very cheap, maybe even free. And if you let them do what they want, you're kind of collecting some leadership capital. So just the very, any interaction that I have with Echo Charles, if I say, hey, get this done. Hey, d- hey, do this. Hey, make a video about this. That cost me leadership capital. Mm. Cost me leadership capital. Especially if you don't want to do it. Mm. It has cost me even more leadership. Now look, I might have some leadership capital with you and you're like, all right, fine, I'll do it. If you want to do it, If I'm like, hey, make a video with robots exploding, you're like, oh, hell yeah, (laughs) right? (laughs) It didn't cost me very much. Mm -hmm. Now, if I say to you, man, I wish we had more videos with robots exploding, you were like, dude, I'm gonna make a sick one. Mm -hmm. That's very cheap. You're still working, so maybe it cost me a little something. But if I say, hey, man, I have no idea what to do. What do you think we should do? And you're like, we need to make a video with robots exploding. I go, that's awesome. (laughs) Dude. I actually gain some leadership capital. Mm-hmm. So everything when you're when you're when people are interacting with each other, there's going to be leadership capital spent. We and, and by the way, every interaction that I have with you, not never mind just a tasking, but when we interact with each other, there's leadership capital being exchanged. Mm-hmm. And we as people always think we have more leadership capital than we do. Here's a couple things that will throw you for a loop. You think rank gives you a bunch of leadership capital? It doesn't. It doesn't. Rank, it, it gives you a little tiny bit. Because, hey, man, you know, obviously I'm in this position and you, you haven't been here as long as me and I've done this stuff before. So there's a, an element of leadership capital that comes with rank. Mm. But it's not as much as we think. Mm. And actually, when I give ownership to someone, when I say, hey, Echo, you go ahead and run this project the way you want. You, you, seem to, you seem to have a good grasp on it. You, that actually earns me leadership capital. So giving ownership earns 
leadership capital. Listening to someone, as simple as that might sound, Mm -hmm. gives me leadership capital. When you come to me and say, I wanna talk to you about something, I go, oh, and I get out my notebook, and I say, hey, tell me what you got. You're just like, I have this idea of doing this, and I'm writing it down. That gives me leadership capital. Mm. You could do like a little, whether it be fresh, long front, or whatever, you could do Mm -hmm. like a fun little quiz Mm -hmm. right and it's like leadership capital quiz like is this spending it or earning it right and you could do little things you could probably go pretty deep with that you can go real deep i've done i've covered that in the academy how to earn leadership capital yeah and what costs leadership capital so you definitely that's that's good we could we could do it on here at some point as well uh it's surprising how much listening to people gives you leadership capital and usually when i talk about the the opposite of that mm-hmm. is when people go, oh yeah, he's right. Cause listen, if you start telling me something, I cut you off, mm, yep. right? Yep, and that's, that's you, you might not realize the weight of when you're telling me something and I listen to you. Yeah. You might not, it's like a subconscious, you'd be subconsciously giving me leadership capital. Yeah, yeah. Subconsciously be like, oh yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. True, but when I cut you off, and you're trying to express something to me, and I just cut you off, and I'm like, "Yeah, I, hey, look, let's get to the topic of the day." Yeah, you're just uh-huh. that. That cost me a lot of leadership capital. Um, just like any, and that's just do with respect. Mm. You know what you were talking about earlier? Uh, a, a crappy job. Mm. If if we got something, if we got to go pick up brass, and I'm out there doing it with you, leadership capital goes up. Mm. If I'm in the air conditioning place, leadership capital goes down. So there's all these things that are going on bro it gets kind of tricky too though but i'm then maybe it's my little pea brain mind going too deep into it maybe it's not but like let's say you okay you know your story right the patches mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. so you let we'll say you let something slide mm-hmm. right you let something slide so sometimes that can under certain circumstances that can gain you, may have you gain leadership capital, yes. but under cer- other circumstances, you can lose it. It's the same action. Bruh. You let something slide, yep. but it's like, oh, you gotta understand. That's you why know? we wrote the dichotomy of leadership. Yeah, that's why a quiz would be great. And that's why leadership is tricky. Yeah, It's tricky, because you, you, gotta, you gotta assess that, and that's why I'm talking about this, this leadership loop. Mm-hmm. Because so often, People aren't actually just checking themselves like, oh, wait a second, I wonder how bad Echo actually wants to do this. I wonder what this is costing me. Yeah. The, the reason that it weighs so heavily for me, first of all, it's because leadership capital is the currency of winning. If you want to win, you got to have a bunch of leadership capital built up. Mm-hmm. And I put so much weight on leadership capital because it, this is an interesting thing to think about. Most of the time, a one idea, it's only a little bit better than some other idea, mm. right? Very rarely are you and I working at a company or in a military unit or part of a team and your idea is so radically different from mine that I'm willing to, that, that I even need to think about, uh, hey, is that a good decision or not? Usually, your idea is pretty good. You're like, in your mind, you're like, hey, well, I, wanna, I wanna explode uh, Star Wars robots, and I think you should explode Terminator. Terminator robots, right? Are those two things worth arguing about? <laughs> no, no. Are they worth it? They're not. I think one thing, you think another thing, but the things that we're thinking are very closely related. So therefore, what trumps the idea, because the ideas are so close, what trumps the idea is leadership capital. We have a common goal, we have a common capability, we have common experiences, and we're gonna come up with pretty similar plans because we're both coming from the same place. Therefore, your plan is probably gonna be viable. And because your plan is viable, because what I say, you want Star Wars? Terminator. Well, okay, yeah. because you want Terminator robots and I want Star Wars robots, they're both viable, but because they're both viable, I make the expenditure of leadership capital a very heavy weighted element of my decision. Because the decision between Star Wars robots or Terminator robot isn't gonna make that much of a difference. Mm-hmm. Now, are there people that freaking dig in about what robot needs to die? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, there are, and they're idiots for doing it. I don't care. Yep. I don't care. And the reason I don't care is because building leadership capital is the strategic move. 
that's the strategic move because if we're spending leadership capital all the time, we won't have any left or we'll even worse, we'll end up in debt and that's not gonna end well. Because by the way, when I don't have any leadership capital with you and I ask you to do something, you're not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. If I have a ton of leadership capital and I need you to do something and there's no time to talk about it and you don't believe in it but I need to get it done, I can actually spend some of that leadership capital and we can move forward. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm gonna do. When I'm making a decision as to whether or not to go left or right or use Terminator robots or Star Wars robots, I'm going to put a huge amount of weight on how much leadership capital this is going to cost me and see and weigh whether this is, whether this is the right move or not. Mm. Most of the time, it's not. Mm. Most of the time, it's not. Leadership capital is more valuable than any other element in the world. Leadership capital. It's it, everything that's it wrapped up in leadership capital, mm. trust, integrity, mm. vision, unity. There's all these things that are wrapped up in it. Mm. That's what makes it so valuable. It's like this, this thing that has so much power. Mm. And yet people will throw it away. People don't even realize how valuable it is. I'll just yeah. throw it away on this, that, or the other thing. Yeah. Like, hey, I could, you just need to get this done. Boom, I just I just spent freaking yeah. however many units worth of leadership capital. Yeah. Dude, you just need to be quiet and get this done. Boom, I was just throwing money away. Yeah. Hey, hey, Jocko, I got a good idea. Hey, look, I don't need to hear your ideas right now. We need to move forward. Okay, cool, that just cost me. Yeah. It's like everything we do, people yeah. just throw it away like it's nothing. Yeah. They, break, they break out the freaking, they go into debt. They go in, they, then they end up bankrupt. <laughs> Leadership. You ever met someone that has no leadership capital left? Yes, I have. Yeah, like you work for someone that's an asshole. You work for someone that doesn't listen to anybody else. They have no leadership capital. Yeah. And 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 maybe they can make some things happen early on because they have the authority or yeah. they have the experience or they have oh, the yeah. position that that and that they can actually make a little bit of progress. And then the leadership capital is gone and everything just falls apart. Yeah. And that's like a, a back. And I've said this before, so I don't need to go too deep into it. But the, you know how, like, you have an old boss that you used to work for, and he was just a dick or whatever, and mm-hmm. you don't work there anymore. Mm-hmm. You work at a better job now, you know. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you see that old boss somewhere. The way you feel about him, you can see his leadership capital is at zero, zero. at that point. At zero. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna consider uh, leadership capital, and it's gonna weigh very heavily. And and by the way, the reason I didn't put this on the list originally because it was so. It was so integral to the way I think I didn't even see it there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just one of those things. It was almost like if you if I was to put down, what do you need every day, Echo? You'd be like, hey, I need a good workout. I need uh, to get a good steak. I, I want to roll jujitsu. And I'd be like, what about oxygen? What about air? <laughs> You'd be like, well, yeah, obviously. that's Leadership capital for me was like breathing air. Yeah, it was yeah. that integral to my day. I didn't even yeah. see it was there. Yeah. So but, Yeah, now that you bring it up, though, it's like it's not like air, right? Because it's so like people don't. Uh, oh, no, actually wrong. It is like air. Oh, it is, but they're ignoring it, so it's like, Well, bro. it is, but people don't realize how valuable until they can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they don't even realize it's there, and they're there like just wasting it, and it doesn't matter, it'll always yeah. be there. No, it's not. You get choked out. That's what happens. Tell me you're not concerned about air when you get in that guillotine choke sunk on you. I am concerned about air at that point. <laughs> Real yes. concern. Yes. So be careful. Tell me if you think this is an uh, example of being in touch with leadership capital. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as you know, we have this dog now, mm-hmm. small dog. Never wanted a dog. I didn't want a dog. What's your dog's name? Maya. It's a small little, wee, mm-hmm. what do you call it? Yorkie, I think. I don't know what you call because I don't have the dog. Come on, bro. You know what it's called. Anyway, one small of these dog. little small dogs, okay. whatever. It's, whatever. It's cute. Whatever. I never wanted the dog, though. Mm-hmm. But why are gonna, we're going to add another thing mm-hmm. to the my simple life. All the kids want dogs. My wife, maybe, maybe she wanted the dog, maybe not, but she hears it from the kids every day. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, every time the kids see a dog. Yep. And there's people in our neighborhood neighborhood with cool little dogs and stuff, mm-hmm. and they're nice dogs. and So they're great examples of dogs all around, constantly being reminded how they don't have a dog, mm-hmm. right? So finally I'm like, hey, all right. I kind of went through this loop a little bit in a small way where yep. I'm like, hey. You, you know, like leadership just, capital at some point in there. Exactly right. So I'm like, all right. Now, just, you, this would be actually be an interesting uh thing for us to do is go through your decision to get a dog and yeah. and 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 assess your leadership loop on this yeah. thing right yeah. i mean you know time well you do have plenty of time to make this decision so you didn't like rush one week and be like okay we need to get a dog now yeah. no you took time to consider it 
two years, by the way. So there you go. Yeah. Cover move. Mm-hmm. You were like, hey, if we don't get a dog, is that putting me first? Yes, it is. Yes. And so you kind of made that decision. Like, like okay, got to put the team first. Yeah. Simple. This is one, one of those things where you're like, well, this is going to actually make things more complex. So you had to put that into the calculus, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Prioritize and execute. Well, is it one of our priorities? Well, we saw some family unity being being uh, created. Mm-hmm. And so that was a positive thing. So the priority kind of stepped up a little bit because we want yeah. the family to be tight. Yeah. And yeah, and there's other, other elements in that too because, you know, like, okay, so my daughter's nine. Mm-hmm. So getting a small dog too, this is like a small, it's not like yeah. some big Great Dane where it's yeah. like more responsibility or whatever. It's a small little dog, minimal arguably responsibility comparatively speaking Mm -hmm. and you have a pet that it actually is responsibility for the kid obviously being supported by us of course you know but you get to learn a little bit of that responsibility sacrifice Mm -hmm. you know and stuff like that so it was a net pot as far as priorities go and the developmental elements of a kid and let's face it like is it unreasonable for a kid to have a childhood pet that unreasonable. No, no, it's good. And as it's you just mentioned, pretty normal. there's lessons to be learned. Exactly right. Which goes into decentralized command. You know that, is this something you can decentralize? So well, did you go, oh, we're gonna get this dog and then I'm gonna have to walk it, I'm gonna have to feed it. I'm, no, you were probably like, hey, I'm not cleaning up dog shit, mm-hmm. right? I'm not gonna be the one that feeds it every day. So you knew you could decentralize some of this stuff. So that is additionally positive here. Mm-hmm. Was it your ego that was getting in the way a little bit? Cause hey, check it out. Let's face it, the dog is gonna take a little attention away from Echo Charles, just a little bit, right? Yeah. And plus, you, you might have been like, hey, this is my house, Yeah. right? You could get into that mode. And that that is... Um, I'm not saying you did, but it could be it a did factor. a little bit, maybe not necessarily in that particular way, like this is my house and I make those, it wasn't that. It was more about like, oh yeah, everyone wants this dog, but what about what I want? It was like that. Yeah. And I was like, bro, that's kind of whack, you know, when See? I realized so that. Good, okay. Um, emotion. You had to at least check the emotion that you were having and that everyone else was, was having. Because if you don't, you you weighed in how happy everyone was going to be. Mm-hmm, yeah. And that countered how like somewhat frustrated you were going to be. Yeah. You actually went through this yeah. and thought to yourself, you know what? Them being super happy outweighs me being a little bit aggravated. So you put, you did the calculus of the emotion, made the right call, mission. Accurate. Does this help our mission as a family? Again, helps bring the family together. There's lessons to be learned. We have something to talk about. We have a, a what's that? A common affection towards this thing. Yep. Even though this thing is small and weak and doesn't really protect us from anything, yep. which is okay. But it gets case. it gets the kids outside right. even more. Right. You know all this stuff. Yeah. Leadership cap. So this is where we get to. So yeah. now you got to a point where it's leadership capital. You were, and how did you calculate that on the dog purchase? Which it, in, in a small way went back to measuring the emotions and comparing mm-hmm. them. But it was essentially that. Like people, everyone knew that I didn't want a dog. In fact, they've been knowing it for two years. I'm not the kind of person, whatever that. That's like no. You know, like I don't complain about that kind of stuff. But they, everyone knew that I was not really into it mm-hmm. at all. Um. When we got it, I didn't be like, yeah, I wasn't into it, but I did it anyway for you guys. None yeah, of that kind of stuff. Good. I was just kind of like, I was like, hey, if that's what we're doing, let's do it. And I'm so actually, I will clean up after it. Okay. Not as a priority, yeah. but I'm down for the support, 100%. So uh, when, uh, when it was time to, to get the dog or whatever, I was like, I basically got on board. And I figured, and I guess in terms of leadership capital, I wasn't thinking of it in terms of leadership capital, but I wasn't thinking of it in terms of like, hey, what would like, what's the right thing to do here? Mm -hmm. And something that would, if I get on board in a positive way, in a conducive way, Mm -hmm. that's going to be better off for everybody. So that's just what I did. But kind of maybe, how should I say inadvertently or whatever, just (laughs) not thinking, thinking of it. I'm sure that did because people know that I didn't want the dog, right. but meanwhile, I have a good attitude about it. Yeah. I'm still cleaning up. I, and let's face it, this is the classic tale, right? Where the dad doesn't want the dog, then the dad ends up being the best friend of the dog kind of a thing, mm-hmm. you know? We're not quite there yet, but I have embraced the dog on a personal level. <laughs> <laughs> Teeny tiny dog. Check. So I feel like if they even notice, who knows? Yeah. They've been, they're little kids. They, yep. you know, they probably uh, I guarantee notice, you got some leadership capital out of this. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. That's good. Because over time, also, you, you got to think, how much am I spending leadership capital when this is the one thing they want and I'm not getting it for them? Yeah. That's, that could be a problem. 
And it's, I, I shouldn't even say, like it probably wouldn't actually be that big of a problem. And the reason it's not that big of a problem because it's a huge ask, right? Mm-hmm. It's a huge ask. A dog is a big deal, man. Yeah. You can't just be getting a dog on a whim. You yeah. need. You should go through this checklist mm-hmm. uh, before you go and in, invest in a dog or pick up a dog from the dog pound or whatever you're going to do. Here's what I do have in mind consciously Mm -hmm. in regards to leadership capital. If I complain about that dog or about having the dog, not even necessarily about the dog, because you can complain about like, frick, the dog's barking, you know, whatever. But if I complain about having the dog, that is like, to me, it feels like I'm like spending so much of that leadership Mm -hmm. capital because it's like, I never wanted that dog, you know, making everyone feel guilty or something like this. Never. It's it's, uh, against the straight up morals. Yeah. That would be That's bad. That's so strict, I think, that, that really would be is. bad. Yeah. So, leadership capital, put that in the calculus. It's more valuable than the air that you breathe from a leadership perspective. Now, the next thing is, as, and I, I've, I've mentioned this a bunch already, but as I'm judging or assessing all these aspects of a decision, I am going to the whole time pay attention to my own bias. Mm-hmm. You know, do I tend to think that I have too much leadership capital? Because there's people that are like that. They think, oh, hey, man, don't worry. I'm Jocko, man. People are just going, no. Mm-hmm. Do I underestimate the amount of leadership capital that I have? First of all, that's rare, and it's usually not true. But those are things that I am going to do. I am going to constantly be assessing my own bias. So you might want to throw onto your leadership loop bias assessment to make sure that you're not making a mistake because of the biases that you have. And or you can put or you can put that into each one of these topics. Ego, emotion, mission, leadership capital. You can put bias into each one of those subcategories to say yeah, you know what? I know I'm always get let my ego get in the way. Mm-hmm. Or or maybe you're saying the other opposite side. You know, I'm never confident enough with my decisions. Mm-hmm. On time, right? What's your bias? Do you think everything takes five minutes when it really takes a half an hour? Calculate that bias. And then the the last thing I'm gonna say here is something that I like to think about. Am I looking at the symptoms or am I looking at the root cause? Because a lot of times the solution that's right in front of your face is actually a solution to a symptom. And we see this like 2D solution that's right in front of us. And it's usually obvious. And here's what's tricky. It's usually right. Usually the first, you know, if Echo's doing something or if we got to come up with a plan and I come up with a quick plan to solve a problem, usually that first plan that we both see is a solution and it will work. But there's a, a, a good chance that we're both reacting to a symptom and not to the disease. Mm-hmm. So I like to just check myself and say, is what I'm looking at the symptom or is it or is it the actual root cause of the problem? And is the solution that's being proposed or the plan I'm coming up with, is it a 2D solution for something that's right in front of me or is it a 3D that will actually get us a long-term solution? So that's what I'm gonna look at. Now, here's what messes us up in this loop, and it's pretty similar to what can mess you up in the OODA loop. Number one is you can get stuck in any one of these areas. Just like you get stuck in the OODA loop, in the OODA loop you can get stuck observing. You're just looking around, looking around, trying to to see what you see, you're trying to get every angle, and you get stuck there. You get stuck looking around, and you get shot down. Mm. Maybe you get stuck orienting yourself. You're like, wait, hold on, where are they? Where am I? Hold on, let me see exactly where I am, and you get shot down. Maybe you get stuck in the decision mode. Wait, should I go left? Should I go right? Should I left go right? I don't know. There's advantage to going left. There's advantage to going right. You get shot down. Mm-hmm. Or act. You just you won't take action. Mm-hmm. You don't do the action. You get shot down. So if you get stuck in any of these as well, same thing. If you get stuck thinking about any of these things and you let it become the focus, I wanna make sure my ego's not a problem, so, and that's what you focus on, you don't consider time, you don't consider emotion, you don't consider the mission, so you can't get stuck on any of these things. You can't get stuck. You have to let the, the loop continue to flow, and you know what you're gonna figure out? You're gonna figure out that there's some things that you're good at in this loop, and there's some things that you're bad at in this loop. Maybe your ego's not a problem, but you have a problem with time. Maybe your emotion 
isn't a problem, but you always get distracted by different missions. Maybe you cover and move really well, but you don't realize that you expend leadership capital on stuff that doesn't matter. So you wanna continually observe these things and you wanna over-index on the things that you know you, you are weak at. So that's the number one way that we get messed up when we're making decisions. The number two things we don't, we ignore the feedback that we're getting, which is such a disaster. It's such a disaster to ignore the feedback that we're getting. And uh, you know the, the point I made earlier about Echo Charles and how my ego is gonna lie to me, mm-hmm. your ego is lying 100% of the time. Let's, let me just say that. My <laughs> ego is, is saying, you know, actually, in this case, Jocko, look, I know I get it, but this case, Echo really is the problem. He really is the problem. That, and when I ignore that, the fact that, I, I, I'm sorry, not that I ignore it, but I let my ego convince me that, you know what, this time, just this one time, my ego's right. Yeah. It's not. Or just this one time, hey, this is an emotional decision. It's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, Jocko said you need to put emotions into calculus, and I'm pissed, so we're going to do it. No. We ignore feedback. And, of course, this comes from a, a lack of humility. You, when, when you're being told something, even in your own head, but you ignore it, like, you know, I know Echo might kind of get screwed by this decision, but you know, he's not gonna notice, boom. Yeah. You're just lying to yourself. You're ignoring the feedback, and that's gonna cost you. And so in order to do that, this comes back to a fundamental, a fundamental skill of leadership that I wrote about in Leadership Strategy and Tactics, and that is the ability to take a step back and detach. That's the only way you're gonna see this stuff. You can't, detachment is a superpower, and the reason that detachment is a superpower is because the solution to the problem is not in the problem. The solution to the problem will not be found inside the problem. You gotta step outside the problem in order to see the solution. Don't get wrapped up in the problem itself. Instead, Take a step back, run through this loop so you can make better decisions. And what is an important thing to re- recognize? You might be thinking like, oh, well, I'm not you know, the CEO of some big company and I don't even need to make a bunch of decisions. Guess what? Life is a series of decisions all day, every day. That's what life is. Everything that you do is a decision. It's, it's almost like the the binary decision, which I wrote about in Discipline Equals Freedom's manual. Everything that you do is a decision. They're not always necessarily binary, but when you live life, you're making decisions. Everything you do is a decision. So because everything you do is a decision, once you realize that, you should detach and you should have a protocol for making decisions because then your decisions will be better. And you should have the humility to realize when you aren't making good decisions and when you get that feedback and realize, oh, I gotta make some different decisions now. And then you make adjustments and you make better decisions and you move on. But, and what's beautiful about this is it means that if everything in your life is based on the decisions you're making, guess what? You have a lot of control over your life based on the decisions that you make. So make good decisions. It's gonna make you a better person. It's gonna make you a better leader. It's gonna give you a better life. All right, there you go. Echo Charles. Yes, sir. Speaking of good decisions, I know there's some ways that people could decide to support themselves a little bit better. Yep, it's true. And they could support this podcast while they're doing it. It's true. They could support America while they're doing it. Very true, yeah. Which is kind of a big deal. Yeah. Especially considering how tenuous the world is right now. The world's a tenuous place. Sure. There's other elements out there making a move. Yeah. You know? Got China making a move. They're out there making a move. Making moves, yeah. They're trying to take the Russia's out there. They're making a move. Yeah. People are stepping up. Moves are being made. That's moves sure. are being made. Yeah. And are we gonna sit back? Now, does this mean you need to pick up a rifle and go to war? No. But I'll tell you what you can do. You can support America. Mm-hmm. I know a good way to do that. Yeah, me too. Well, it starts with ourselves, right? I think a lot of the time where you're no talking about, about it. good decisions where, look, other people are not making decisions for you unless you're letting them. Mm-hmm. But you want to make good decisions for yourself, right? I would imagine. So it starts with yourself. We're uh, 
take caring, taking care of ourselves physically, mentally, deciding to. That's what we're doing. It's true. Yep. Yep. So we're working out, of course. One hundred percent. We're reading. I yes. know that. Yes, we are. We should be. At the very least, wait, listening. Are, wait, are you reading? I'm, like, I'm reading here and there. Bro, same, I don't know same. about this. <laughs> wait, wait a second here. What are you reading? <laughs> um. Well, there was... Okay, so there's a book. Because you can't reference mind games, which you read nine years ago. Yeah, probably not. And that's, not, I think that, that may be the only book you've ever referenced since I've known you. Oh, I don't know. I've read plenty okay. of books. Okay, what do we got? But, what's, on the, what's on the docket? Echo Charles. Yeah, I, and more so than I'm going to tell you what's currently on the docket because I'd have to, you know. But wait a second, bro. <laughs> you can be honest. We're telling each other the truth. Okay. This is like leadership, uh, you know, uh, uh, capital we're trying to build. Okay. If you're not going to tell me like, oh, no, no, right okay. now I'm not reading anything, Jocko, because, you know, it's summertime and I was in Hawaii. Yeah. And so we're not reading anything unless you are. Yes. So, so what are we reading right now? Okay, Nothing so, or this book? So it de- depends because that's a spectrum. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, so is you there, should is, own this 100% yeah, okay. right now. Otherwise, yeah. it's not going to look here's good. The, here's the 100% uh, uh, truth okay. on the matter. So I have Kindle books and audio books. Like, you know, some are halfway done. Some yeah. are all done. Some okay. are whatever. So when, how much time has to be elapsed? between the last time I was into one of these books, actually like reading it mm-hmm. or listening to it to now, how much time has to pass before I'm technically not reading? Let's just say a week. Okay. We might not be reading. <laughs> <laughs> but All right. that being said. Well, that's kind of a bummer. That means that the books that you're reading or even listening to mm-hmm. must not be that captivating. Uh, or, well, yeah, I mean, I guess in a matter of speaking, technically, yeah, but that doesn't mean that they're not captivating. That might mean that other things that I'm oh, doing. They're competing are with very life. Competing and and with life, life. Is, is life is is captivating, which is a good thing. Yes, sir. Right? But the I last. I never thought of that comeback. You know, some people are like, I'm reading three books a week. Be like, oh, that's cool. I'm actually living. Yeah. Right? That could be a little bit of a dichotomy. Could be, yes. And obviously that's going to depend because reading three books a week, one, we mm-hmm. don't know how fast they read or listen or whatever or what or, they're or, doing. You yeah. know, what if they're going on miles, runs, doing the same thing? You know, it's kind yeah. of a, you know, so it can be an awesome. It can be kind of what you're alluding to where it's like, what cool. if I'm flexing though? <laughs> that's fine. Oh, right. wait, flexing with the like, I'm reading. That's just yeah. a flex. Like, like, uh, fourth book I've read this month. Right, right. Just to sort of brag. Just flexing. And make like, yeah. Well, well, you know, there are very many variations of flexing. Because so it'd be know. an interesting reflex would be like, hey, I don't have time to read books. Yeah. Or that could be an excuse. It could be an excuse. Yeah, so okay. it just depends. Right. It's a dichotomy. Okay, so where where is Echo the, Charles the last in this book that I spectrum finished, that we were considering? The last book that I finished, which was recently, uh, I don't know, whatever, a few months. Actually, I read it twice. Okay. So, uh, was the four agreements oh, recommended by Jason, Jason Gardner. Gardner? Yeah, right. that's a good one. And you guys, I heard you guys talking about it, and you seemed uh, both. You know, you were both concurred that it was good. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah, and a lot of times that that type of book, and I mean this type, the, that type of book in this particular particular way is it's real like, um, like it has a lot of spiritual like terms, mm-hmm. you know. But and you know, usually spiritual terms are real like. They land on different people in different okay, ways. I'm not tracking spiritual term, i.e. Yeah. what? What's a spiritual term? Like, um, you know, calling things black magic or because he'll use that term a lot. Yeah, black but magic. He's, using, he's using those terms because I, I heard you guys talking about it and I think I might have even been talking to you a little bit about it or Jason. Those are just like an analogy. Yeah. Like this type of attitude is black magic yeah. that's negative. Yes. Right? So I took it in that way. Okay. L- like It's not this like he was saying analogy. it was literal black ma- magic. Yeah. And every once in a while it kind of it, felt like that. Okay. But either way, I, mm-hmm. I never took it as that. Like mm-hmm. to me, that's not the useful part of it. Um, the useful part is many other things. But anytime they say something like black magic, I know what he's saying. Mm-hmm. I know what you mean. I think I do anyway. I believe I do. So I, I just, I, I put it that way. I okay. took it in that way. Um, but yeah, so that being said, the spiritual parts, even with those spiritual parts or whatever, like what he was saying with all the four agreements is like very, it was re- it's a good one. Okay. It's a good one. And a lot of it might not come as like a surprise. Like, oh man, I totally yeah. didn't know that. But just like a lot of books about like ways yeah. to think and regard yourself in the world and stuff. It's like, oh, okay, that's, that makes sense. Yeah. Or that's a good reminder. Yeah. You know, well, it's kind of like what we just covered. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, of course you should yeah. consider if you're screwing over your, your buddy. Yeah. Yep. And it seems obvious, yeah. but 
there's times that people do this aware, unaware. And I think the big warning there is like, you think no one notices, everyone knows. So yeah, mm-hmm. some things can be, actually, I think when something seems obvious, usually that's affirming to like, this is this has gotta be, this is pretty true. Mm-hmm. Because I, I know I felt this way, and now I'm seeing this guy felt this way, and now I, you know, so yeah. it becomes like a thing. Yeah, and sometimes it just puts certain things, certain elements into perspective that you might not have realized how important they are mm-hmm. or how prevalent they are in day to day, you know, stuff. Awareness. Yeah. When you're aware of things, you become uh, just awareness is a is a huge step up in understanding and reacting properly. Oh yeah. And interacting properly with the world. Like the idea that you actually brought up a few times today, uh, the idea that like people notice, <laughs> like well, like well, I see what you're doing, or I see whether it be your intention, or when they're getting screwed over, whatever. Like the the idea that people n- can see what's going on, that I think that's one of the many things that's like it helps to understand how big of a thing that is. Like you know how it's like, yeah, sometimes they'll notice, sometimes they won't. It kind of feels like that sometimes. They notice. Oh yeah, people know. Like you know how, and I've said this before. I got it from Sam Harris, where it's like name, when you name drop someone, mm-hmm. it's like bro, everyone sees you name dropping, and it's not even like a, a noble thing. You mean when you talk about I got this from Sam Harris? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After we hung out this one day, you know, it was, it was awesome. But but that's like you know one of the many examples of sure maybe somebody caught it, but you know. I'm sure it was effective when yeah. I did, but bro, everyone noticed the yeah. same way you'll notice when someone else does it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of one of those things. But um, and there's a lot of things like that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so yeah, that I think that book overall was a lot of that. Um, but some stuff was like, oh, that is a good way to look yeah. at things. You yeah. know, and and sometimes when somebody's written something out and they've explained it, it clarifies it for you. Mm-hmm. It in- increases your understanding and the better understanding you have, then the more you can interact with that properly, you can utilize that as a tool. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we so want to read. Very, on varying levels. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because I'm reading one book a week over here, Flex. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. If you're reading one book a week, that's good, man. Yeah. It, it's hard to say that that's bad. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I don't actually know if I, there was a while where I was reading one book every week when we were doing the podcast and it was like almost all books. Yeah. And then we, it seemed like we went a little, a bunch of people were coming on for interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a little bit more interview centric. So, but I, th- this I can say, there is no period of time of more than two days where I haven't read something. Oh, damn. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. But that's not a flex, bro, because guess what? Maybe I should be, uh, you know, surfing yeah. or getting in fights at uh, REI. Sure. Or, Hell yeah. You know, Parking lot fights. Situations. Hell yeah. But well, the, oh, we are the, working out you know, every day. You know Joel Tudor, yeah. You know, of course. Joel Tudor, he, if you don't know, he's a surfer and a jiu-jitsu guy and an awesome guy. But uh, he, like, posted something something about, like, basically kook surfers. <laughs> like, you know, surfer starter kit. Mm-hmm. Malibu surfer starter kit. And one of the pictures was, like, a sprinter. And uh, I, I, I responded <laughs> on this post. I was like, hey, bro, I got a sprinter. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So, sorry, Joel. Right. Sorry, Joel, I got a sprinter there people well so it's kind of a confirmation really in a small way oh you the call me a kook huh <laughs> that's messed kook, up kook. i was up on the horses and i asked the guys the cow the actual cowboys i said i said hey in surfing if you're a kook, if you don't know how to surf but you have a surfboard and you're paddling out but you have no idea what you're doing mm-hmm. then you're a kook mm-hmm. i said what's that called on horseback riding mm-hmm. and because that's me because i don't know how to ride a horse yeah. and they said uh it's a dude. Huh. So there's a thing called a dude ranch, yeah. which is basically for city slickers to go out and oh. like be a cowboy for a little while. Oh, I didn't know that. And so if you're one of those people, then you are a dude. That's weird. I've heard of dude there ranch. Was I thought it was something else. There was another word that they told me as well, but I can't remember it. Yeah. It's funny. But I was one of those. I am one of those on a horse. You're a dude? Yeah. That's funny. There was a show called Hey Dude. And it was about a dude ranch, and it was, I think it was on like Nickelodeon too, or something. Back in the day. Back in the day. Well, hey man, you learn something new every day. See, sometimes you don't even have to read. You just come listen to mm-hmm. Jocko being a dude or kook or whatever <laughs> you're being over there. Uh, but we are working out every day. Yes. Yes. Like currently working out. Like You can make that claim. You don't have to, you don't have to sort of 
put <laughs> put explanations around that claim. <laughs> yeah. Bro, your face was so guilty when you said you read. I was like, dude, please don't lie in well, front of everybody. I was, trying to, I was trying to do the calculus because that's a legitimate question. Because like, if you say, oh, I'm working out, right? But you haven't worked out in two weeks. You're like, bro, you're not working out. Yep. You're currently not working out, actually. Yep. But if it's been like two days, that's like, okay, you could have yeah, yeah. just been coming off a rest yeah. weekend or something yeah. like this. And you're still on the program, yeah. see what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. working out. So with reading, how is that? I never thought about it. So, look, if I read last night before I went to bed or something, easy, right? I know the answer. Oh, well, I'm reading this. Last night I was reading this. Yeah. But let's face it. It's been three weeks. <laughs> so that was and the guilty. three weeks is kind of a gift, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Huh? Huh? It, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you. It's kind of a gift. Yeah. Wait, I'm giving well, you the opportunity it, to tell the truth. Wait, wait. What do you mean three weeks is a gift? I'm saying me saying, oh, you, you, you were reading three weeks ago. You were reading. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me, yeah. It's kind of me being not generous. Yeah, technically, I don't know. I've never done the, the math and the technical, you know, evaluation. But if you compare it but to I working hope you out, never get interrogated. I know, you're I not know. good. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> if you compare it to working out, then no, I'm not reading. Currently, not Chuck. reading. But here's the thing, too, though. Did you already lift today? No, not okay. yet. This afternoon, squats today. By oh, the way, okay. Yeah. Uh, you either get the w- mental prep going. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but here's the thing about reading versus working out. You can pick up a book for like. 10 minutes Mm -hmm. you can read three pages Mm -hmm. working out if i go do one two sets of curls is that a workout Mm -hmm. i know it's btn i know i know btn is better than nothing yeah which is a non-philosophy in my opinion but that's just just my opinion deep how about this we'll use that philosophy very sparingly how about that all right but you see what i'm saying though yes you can read a short amount and it still is providing legitimate benefits yeah and progress yeah whereas Two sets of curls. Yeah. Well, it is BTN if you believe in that f- philosophy, which Echo doesn't. Yeah. I would say it, it truly is BTN. It is better than nothing. Yeah, but if I go two sets of curls and then now I say, hmm, you know what, that's going to be my workout routine. Bro, after about two months, it's kind of like an end. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Okay. No matter speaking. So, okay, look. We got to the bottom of it. Thank you, Jocko, for your input. <laughs> We're hopefully reading. We're right. hopefully working out. We're hopefully uh, improving ourselves so we can deal with the world in a better way to make better decisions. Right. Right. So get some Jocko fuel. Jockofuel.com. Get yourself some milk. Get yourself some. Hey, this is this is of all the things we're going to say about Jocko fuel. The flavors of the Discipline Go drinks have been radically upgraded. Mm. They were based on my taste buds before. My taste buds are not normal. My taste buds weren't appropriate to judge the taste of a drink for the world. I had to run that through the leadership decision loop and say, wait, my perspective on this is not correct. Other people have a more, a better palate for the job. And we also want something that's more universally Loved. So we redid all the flavors. All the flavors are now awesome. You may have had one flavor that you really liked before, and you might have had two that you just like, these are gross. Weren't down for you. Now you'll at least like all the flavors. And there will be three and maybe five of them that you love. Yeah, I would say that's probably true. Totally redid them all. Uh, They taste delicious. If you tried them when they were based on my palate, I apologize. Yeah. Um, I'm taking ownership of the fact that I had a very sensitive palate to sweetness and a little bit of sweetness tasted like sugar cane yeah. in my mouth and that wasn't the truth. Besides so this, we made it better. you just drink water though, pretty much for the That's most That's what I'm part. saying. That's why my palate yeah. was so jacked. And now, and recently I got on the water train. So the only thing that I drink is water. Every once in a while, I'll have like a milk mm-hmm. shake. Actually, I have that more, but even now, everything is way sweeter. Everything. Mm-hmm. If you just drink water. Before, mm-hmm. I'd have an occasional Gatorade here. Maybe some, you know, the kids got some orange well, juice. Well, that's a good example, too. Mango? Yeah. I didn't like your mango flavor of Discipline Go. Mm. Mango mayhem. And now, it tastes really good. Mm. It's still not my favorite of the group, but I will definitely enjoy drinking it so we're good yep i feel like we're good too so there you go get out here and get you some of that um also we got the hunt gear coming originusa.com get yourself some american-made hunt gear and listen 
That's just that's just what we have to do in the world right now. There's like I said, there's people that are stepping up, people that are not good, and they're stepping up and they're trying to take over. And you don't need to necessarily pick up a rifle to go to war, but right now it's an economic war. And if you pick up some Origin USA gear, it's gonna help us win the war. So we don't have to fight a war. That's the goal. Let's be economically strong. So go to originusa.com, get a gi, because you should be training in jiu-jitsu just in case the war does come. Get some hunt gear, just in case the war does come. You can hunt the enemy. But in the meantime, you can hunt deer, elk, whatever Mm -hmm. else it is you want to hunt. Get yourself some of that. Um, Also, we have a store. Don't we have a store? We do. Okay. What's that all about? It's called Jaco Store. You want to represent while well, we're, uh, you know, improving ourselves, making good decisions. Mm-hmm. You want to represent discipline equals freedom, which is kind of the overarching kind of thing for this whole thing. The more discipline you are, the more freedom you are. Anyway, you want to represent. We got some cool shirts and hats and hoodies and whatnot, some merch. But it's better than just merch, though. By the way, a lot of thought and effort and careful, meticulous. Consideration has been put into all of these elements. You should put that into every package that you send out. I'm good. Just let everybody know that I'm, careful time consideration yeah. has been put into this. Oh well, yeah, but and it's true. Thing. There are many people. And when I say many, I mean for a countless people that have said these, like this, called the shirts and stuff like. It's my my favorite. What's shirt. up with the new shirt that you have on right now? Um, this, this is called the standard issue, yep. right? This one equals freedom. Standard issue. So it's and a new one. And there's it, there's multiple color ways. Color ways, yeah. You might re- <laughs> you might recognize the um, you know, the colors and what they represent. But there's if you don't, that's there's fine. There's some kind of layer there. Yes, sir. People need to figure out what the layers mean. Yep. Simple, but maybe not easy kind of a thing. I actually didn't to... figure out. You guys told me. I may have figured out. If I would have maybe seen them all at the same time and yeah. done a consideration, yeah. I might have figured it out, but I didn't I didn't figure it out. But also I looked at him for like three seconds. I was like, all right, yeah. do tell me. I'm well, when you looked this. at the one, you were like, that's what that is. And then all, uh, all you had to do is okay. apply that same thinking to all yeah. of them. You'd be like, oh, I see what's going on here. But okay. yeah, but either way, layers there for sure. But if you don't, if you don't know the layers, it doesn't even, doesn't even matter. You just choose the color that you like or yeah. the colors. And you then like. if you do understand the layers, then it kind of matters too. Yes, sir. Doesn't matter if you don't get them, but if you get them, it kind of does matter. Yeah, it does. Let's face it, because yeah. if you listen, you know. <laughs> you know. This is the way I see it. This one is kind of like this, what we call it standard issue. It's kind of like the main one uh-huh. we're positioning as kind of the main discipline equals freedom. The standard. If you have this one, you're, you're, that's the standard. You one. have the standard issue. Yep. Like if you don't have it, like, are you even in the game or what? <laughs> I'm not saying you're not, but you see what I'm saying? There's a question. You don't there. have the standard issue is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. There you go. So yeah, uh, jockostore.com. We also have the shirt locker. Don't forget about that su- subscription. One shirt, a new shirt, one a month there. New, different designs, a little yeah. bit more creative, I would say. Um, Those are pretty uh, good ones coming out. Yeah, you g- you gave me a brief on the one that's coming out. Yep. I'll say uh, it's it's affirmative. Yeah, it's a yeah. good one. It's good. Is it's that good. next? When is that? How far out is that? Um, so August, out, two September, out. September. Oh, that's a good one for September. Yep. All right, awesome. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. You know that. Uh, JockoUnderground.com. dot com. We've been putting some out there. If you want to get some questions to us, we'll respond to those directly. And it's also given us the ability to have our own platform to make sure that whenever we get banned from this one which could happen at any time. Mm -hmm. Or they might just say, hey, from now on, when you listen to this podcast, we're gonna insert our own advertisements in here. Mm -hmm. So we don't like that. That's why we made jockounderground.com, so if you wanna go there, subscribe to that. Uh, YouTube channel, if you wanna see awesome assistant directing from me, you can check out that, and uh, I'll get you covered down. (laughs) Thanks, thanks. Psychological warfare on MP3, flipsidecanvas.com, Dakota Meyer. I've written a bunch of books about leadership, check them out. Only Cry for the Living by Holly, Holly McKay. That's uh, Jocko Publishing. She wrote that book. She risked her life to go write that book. So she's been on the podcast. The book is is insane to read and it will teach you about the world and about evil in the world. So check that out. We also have Echelon Front Leadership Consultancy. Echelonfront.com if you want me to come and talk to your company. Let us know echelonfront.com, if you need help, we can help you. If you wanna to go to the, any of the events that I've been talking about, things like the muster, things like the council, things like EF Battlefield, just 
just come and check those. The next EF Battlefield, it's sold out, but it's at Little Bighorn. Looking at that, looking forward to that. I think the next muster is in Atlanta, Hotlanta, October 12th to the 14th. We sell out everything, so if you want to come, get there quick. And also, we have the online training academy. I mentioned that a couple times today. Teaching people how to lead in their life. And a lot of times people think, oh, you know, I don't need to learn how to lead. I'm only in charge of three people. Mm-hmm. Or I don't need to know how to lead because I'm not even in charge of anyone. Yeah. Guess what? You are in charge of someone. You, you're making decisions all the time. You have a family. You have peers that you need to lead. You have to lead your boss. I know that seems crazy. Mm-hmm. So go to extremeownership.com if you want to get in on that online training. Part of the reason we built that is to make it more accessible to more people. That's the mission of Echelon Front, to pass on the leadership lessons we learned. And the lead, the Echelon Front team can't get to everybody. But now we can. Extremeownership.com. Go and check it out. And if you want to help service members active and retired, you want to help their families, you want to help Gold Star families, check out Mark Lee's mom. Mama Lee, she's got an incredible charity organization where she provides most of, most of what she does. She does a bunch of things. I would say that the best thing that she does, well, I don't say the best thing. Uh, how can I say this? One of the most impactful things that she does, and she does a lot of impactful things, is she provides medical help for veterans that is not provided for by the Veterans Administration. So hyperbaric chamber is one of the primary things she does to take someone that's having issues and pay for them to go to a, a location where they have a hyperbaric chamber put them on the right nutrition give them the right vitamins get their get their health squared away for 30 days everything's paid for 30 days of recovery from the impact of combat and trauma that's one of the things that she does so that's at America's Mighty Warriors.org. So check that one out. And then, of course, I was talking about being on a horse today, and I'm a dude, sure. meaning I'm not skilled. But you can, when you're out there in the wilderness and you're interacting with an animal and you're in the open air, it's, it's a very positive thing for your mental and physical health. So, Micah Fink, he has this thing called Heroes and Horses at heroesandhorses.org. He takes veterans into the wilderness for 41 days. And it's horseback, it's camping, it's staying out on the trail, and guys are coming back renewed and reanimated for life. So check out heroesandhorses.org. He's been on the podcast. I'm sure we'll get him back on here again at some point, but... He's got a great charity, as does Mama Lee. So check those things out if you want to support. And if you want to check in with us, we're on social media, on Twitter, on the Gram, on Facebook. Echoes at Echo Charles. I'm at Jocko Willink. Hey, listen, and if you're going to go on there, I, all I'm saying is be careful. Because there's an algorithm that's looking to grab you by the throat. Don't let it. Be ready for it. Don't let it run your life. Get off your phone. And, of course, to all those military folks out there in the world that are making decisions every day that provide us freedom and security thank you for what you do and also thanks to police and law enforcement and firefighters and paramedics and EMTs and dispatchers and correctional officers and border patrol and secret service and all the first responders thank you for protecting our freedom and security here at home and everyone else out there life is all decisions and everything you do is based on decisions that you make. So think about the process. And and think about the amount of control that these decisions give you over your own life. And think about the impact that these decisions have in your life. So don't just let them happen. Make them happen. Make them happen by being aware of your decisions and make them happen by having a protocol so you make the right decisions to do the right things so you can be a better leader, a better person, and lead a better life. And until next time, this is Echo and Jocko, out.